All right, you guys, this is Essie the Homesteader. Peace. I hope everybody's having a happy Sunday. Um, I just wanted to bring you guys an update on the homestead. Y'all know a few days ago I had sold some seeds and my grow bags, and they haven't germinated yet, but I'm, I'm hoping they will. Um, I did sow some carrots, some kale, and um, cabbage. So I think it was three variety of each vegetable. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you guys over here on the right side of the raised bed area and show you guys my collard greens. I am so excited. I am so excited. I'm hoping to harvest collard greens all the way up until at least February or March because um, I think I harvest them all, all the way up to March or April. Um, so they are doing really well in this area. So in certain areas, they, they taking their time to grow. So the spaces, y'all know me, I don't like space in these raised beds. So I took some time out the other day and I sowed some more seeds to fill it out. But again, super excited about my collard greens because I love collard greens. I can eat collard greens every day. All right, so this is the other raised bed. And this one is doing really well on one end. And on this end, it's moving pretty slow. So there's some spaces in there. You can see some of the little baby leaves coming in. But what I did do was in some of these other spaces, I sold more seeds. Yep, y'all know Essie loves sowing seeds. So um, over here in my sweet potato pool, I don't know what's going on in here. I don't think I'm going to have a great harvest of sweet potatoes this year because I did try a different method. Um, next season, what I'm going to try to do is grow them in a raised bed. And hopefully I'll get a, a, a great harvest then. But I am going to dig this up and see if there's anything in there. I don't think so. But I know on, on the other, the left side of the raised bed area, the um, sweet potato pool does have some sweet potatoes in there. It may not be much, but there is some in there because I can see them bulging out. So we're going to step over here. And as y'all can see, I cleaned up the straw bales. So I got rid of um, the tomato plants because it was all over the place. It was dying back. Um, we had a freeze. I did pluck some tomatoes off and I'm going to take those in the house. But for the most part, everything was dying back because of the freeze. So I cleaned out all the straw bales and I still got some more cleaning up to do and I'm going to get to it. But let me show y'all my huge grow bag. Let me step back so y'all can get a nice view. So that is the grow bag, um, and that one is filled with a variety of, I think it's two different types of collards, probably three different types of kale, and it is going crazy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everything some 5-Eleven today um, and keep them, you know, keep them growing strong. So yeah, I'm going to probably fill up a bucket with some 5-Eleven and just douse everybody with some, some good nutrients today. So that is my other grow bag. I love this grow bag. I mean, you could put some of everything in here. It is huge. You guys need to run and get you some. So, okay. So that is my right side. And let me show you guys the, um, the okra. Okra is still growing, y'all. But it is trying to die back. Let me see if I can get nice. Because this, this okra grew so tall. And then you can see, let me come in here and show you guys the ones that are still doing well. They're nice and green. I was like, this okra is still growing, y'all. Look at this over here. And I need to come out here and get them while they're still nice and, you know, pretty and green. But for the most part, I'm definitely going to have to start um, pruning back. Yeah, I'm going to have to chop and drop, y'all. So you can see the ones that are um, that don't got frostbite, the freeze don't got to them. But the ones that still look good, I'm gonna come back out here and get them. And let me show you, you guys the uh, the uh, green uh, uh, what is it? The green tower, the green stalk tower. 
okay so i'm gonna have to clear that out but i do have some some green peppers that are doing good over here and they probably won't reach the, the uh full maturity but they 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 are usable so i'm gonna harvest those and i think i showed you guys the uh what is it the uh tiny tims and you could tell that they have been you know frostbite and i don't i might even try to harvest them but i don't think they're going to be that great because you can see the frostbite in them yeah they're kind of clear but overall i was pleased with the um the green stalk um grow tower but i know probably next year it'll be a better um grow season for it so i did get some what is it to uh, pear tomatoes i got some um the red tabasco peppers um i got a few things out of there so overall i was pleased with it for the first time of, yeah and that's that okra again y'all see how tall it got remember that branch i showed you guys it just it just leaned over okay so this is the right side of the raised bed area and then let's go to the left side now i have to clean all of this up y'all this was the roma tomato section so i'm trying to find my my little uh what is it hedge uh pruner where i could just chop it down chop and drop it and I, I just haven't been able to locate it but all this needs to be cleaned up and as you can see i still have roma tomatoes y'all they still coming in i even thought about i even thought about just leaving one and just see what it do because it's still producing y'all see that roma tomatoes are still producing over here and it's cold at night so i might just let it run its course here's a bunch of them right here look all those tomatoes yep okay so over here i have to be careful you guys and because this is the left side of the raised bed area where I have gotten stung several times. So that corner right there, this corner right here is where the bees are living. They have a hole there. So I don't go over in that area anymore because what happened was C1 just came out of there. What happened was I was weeding out a lot. So every time I would go over there to weed out, I would get stung. And had no idea that that's that's where they were living until one day i just watched them so okay here is the sweet potato pool which have some sweet potatoes in there y'all y'all remember i tried that method and put one potato in there and that's the potato that i had put in there y'all remember that and it just binded out see that you got potatoes there bulging you got another potato over here that's bulging and then i see one uh back there see it right there y'all he's bulging out so there's potatoes in there i just have to i i will have to um move this pool kind of drag it out to the outside of the grow area and harvest it that way because i can't harvest in that corner because that's where the bees live okay so let me see if i can lift this up so this is my other area where i have a bunch of collards let me give you guys a shot that way so this raised bed is doing really well but there was that bug everything else is doing well and it might have had died back by now but there was this bug you see what he did he decimated that one and this one was doing so well it was just it was thick it was full of leaves and y'all see what it did but for some reason it, it hasn't really messed with anything else but this one so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually just leave that one right there. Because if he's just eating on that one, I'm going to let him go ahead and eat on that one. Because he's not really messing with the other ones just yet. And um, I had brought some tool. And I said I was going to lay some tool on the uh, the grow table bags where the, the grow, grow bags is at. I was going to lay some tool over that. So when they do germinate, especially when it comes to the cabbage they won't be able to interfere in them. So let me give y'all that shot of all the potato, I mean, sorry, um, peppers. 
Remember I told y'all this is the pepper lane. Call that the pepper lane. And it's where I got all the peppers at the other day. So there's still a lot of peppers out here. I'm going to let them, you know, run their course. Whenever they die back, they die back. But there's still a lot of them on there, and they're still doing their thing. And actually, let me see if I can. See, I don't want to get too close over there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Y'all see that nice thing on my feet? I just noticed him today. He's a nice size. He's probably one of my biggest um, green peppers that I've had. Yep, I just noticed him today. Okay, so that's that's one of the um, raised beds. And here we go with the other raised beds. Now this one is doing good too. We got some collards. We got um, a variety of collards here. And I can see down there that that bug had got to one of those plants down there. And again, I think what I'm gonna do is just lay some tool over it. I might even try to take this this um, tarp, the shade cloth, and lay it on top of it, and maybe that'll give it some more protection. So this is the other collard uh, raised bed. Super excited about all my collards and kale, and I am definitely looking forward to harvesting. I might even come out here today and um, pluck some of these leaves off. Let me get on this end so I can show you guys. And this thing right here. See how well they doing? Y'all remember last year they came, they literally was growing outside of the raised bed. That's how big they had got. So they they doing good. But again, y'all see that bug. That bug is around here somewhere. He is around here somewhere. I might even have to come out here and spray some of them insecticide on them, which I really don't want to do. But I might have to do it. It's either that or put the um, tool on top of it to protect it. Yeah, because he out here. That's a nuisance bug. What do y'all call it? The, the white moth, green moth, whatever it is. He's a nuisance. And I see the other ones on this end. And they, they are doing pretty good. Alright you guys, so let me take y'all to the keyhole area where there's not much going on because what I'm going to start doing is cleaning the keyhole area up and let me show you guys. So everything is pretty much died back. That's where we had the cucumbers, the uh, eggplant, uh, tomatoes, that is done and this was my other raised bed that I had um, built and I filled it up but I never got a chance to plant anything in it so I think what I'm gonna do with these is cover them up with tarp so it can keep their nutrients in there and this is the middle keyhole and uh, this one had a lot of the green beans in it so what I did do I got my my um, sons to empty out all the grow bags and buckets and put the soil in here and I put some cow manure in here and everything but again I didn't get a chance to sow any seeds in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the keyhole just rest cover them up with tarp and just let them rest over the um, winter season and then they'll be ready uh, for uh, spring and then over here y'all check this out I still got little prints coming in little prince eggplant I'm at, um, matter of fact, I'm probably going to harvest those two and just pull it out because it's pretty much a done deal. That's where I had the, uh, what was it called? The, the um, burgundy okra, which I was able to harvest some, but not a lot, but some. And that uh, okra plant back there had went crazy with the green okra. And then I had the burgundy plant um, okra in the middle area. And this was the area where I had the green beans. And I tried to put up like a mini rabbit fence, which I never got a chance to finish um, to protect them because the deers was jumping in there. And you could see whatever is still 
getting in there you can see the, the the prints and stuff so i think come next season i'm going to have to open up the raised bed area fence and get another fence and connect it and come around like so like take it from this end open it up on this end and bring it right around like this and then open up the other end which is right here and then bring that around so i could keep the deer from galloping in here right okay you guys so that is an update on the raised bed area and the grow um table with the um grow bags so again you guys wish me luck on these grow bags but um i got a tip from queen Su suzette and she told me when she plants her seeds um, i think she was specific about the carrots and she saw her carrot seeds and then she puts newspaper on there until they germinate so i said you know what that is such a great tip i'm gonna try that so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna lay some newspaper around the um the three middle ones because i had already sowed seeds on the the far right and the far left already so in the three middle ones i'm going to put that paper bag down and hopefully that gives them a little bit of warmth too um and hopefully they'll germinate we'll see you guys y'all wish me luck on that one so okay this is essie the homesteader i hope you guys enjoyed the update on essie's homestead and i'll see you guys on the next video peace